And in this video, we leave Go Check for Marmaris and Bodrum. What a beautiful day it was when we left. An overnight stay in Bozak Buku. Amazing place. Roughed up a little bit the next day. Good to give Awanui NZ a little bit of a walk workout. And then once we got to Bodrum, we had the water maker fitted. Enjoy. So we want to create a route from Gocek through to Marimus. There's the part of the Mediterranean that we're in Italy off to the west there. Just zoom in a little bit. There's Rodos Island. Remember we went from Rodos across to Gocek. So Gocek uh, is off in the top right corner there. We'll just start building our route. Waypoint 1 is where we start. We'll just zoom in a little bit and create another point there just to head out towards the islands in the outer gulf head along the uh, peninsula of turkey and then across the bay and head into marimus beautiful sheltered area in marimus so uh, just beautiful from there we're going to um, come back out into the bay the next day probably head along stop at bozuk uh, buku on the way up to bodrum and uh, we just head around quite a few Greek little islands. There's Kos Island, top left there. We'll head past that as we go into Bodrum, where we will get the water maker fitted. So that's our next uh, two or three days. Um, after that, we're going to head to Santorini, so uh, out through the Greek islands. Should be a beautiful trip. And into Predict Wind, got to download all the gribs, get all the data, and that's what we want to see. That is the waves or the swells, and purple is just fantastic. No problems there, just 300 mil. And across to Wind, and we'll zoom in there, have a bit of a look at that. Get in nice and close, and we can just push the record button, and it starts playing from the current time, right through to when we get in Marimus and you can see there about seven to ten knots. Okay so today we head off first time on our own. Fiona and Mark got the engine started it is what time is it about 7.15 yep. on Tuesday morning. Sure is. And we've done our briefing haven't we? We have we've done the briefing. Everything. So only thing left here was ropes and they are set so everything's done on our checklist before we go. All right, so I will go upstairs and call the okay. marina. See ya. I'll be down there. Decided we're going to leave nice and early most days if we can because pretty obvious that is when the weather is the most settled and pleasant. Demarin, Demarin, this is Nordhaven, Awanui, NZ. Good morning. Dom, this is Demarin. Yes, good morning. We are ready to depart off Pier D. Roger, not down pilot, but we had to go when I Okay, so that was um, Roger, Nordhaven, pilot boat on the way. So, up here, uh, we've got the bow thruster just check that works and I've already checked um, idle forward and back on the thrust so basically we are ready to go here's the rope lady Undoing the stern ropes, bringing that in. Oop, I'll go this way. Okay, he'll pull that out for you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, see you next time. Bye bye. So 
Marky, we've only just left port. Do you want to just let everybody know what's happened? Okay, all right. Um, so what's happened is I went from forward idle through to reverse idle too quick. And when that happens, I did it on the port engine, when that happens, it disconnects the drive so that you don't do any damage to the gearbox. So we now have the starboard engine going, um, but the port engine is just sitting there at idle. So I'm going to have to get the manual out because I saw them do it a while ago um, when they did it. And um, there's a bit of button pushing and you re-engage it. So what we're doing, we use the bow thruster to keep ourselves safe. And now we're out here in a nice big open stretch of water. We are going to start heading towards Marmaris. Look at that beautiful boat out there. Isn't it gorgeous? We'll get yeah. the autopilot on. The starboard engine's going beautifully, so that's the stabiliser going. And then I will sort out how we get thrust back on the port engine. So uh, if you had disabled that on the port engine, no, the starboard engine, we, we would have no, no longer have stabilisers yeah, either. Yeah, because it's still got idle. Right. As long as the engine's ticking over, which the port engine is, yeah. then... It's just um, that you said about the stabiliser, so I thought that meant it yeah. was different if it was the other no, one. No, no, it's not, sorry. Yeah, yeah. so because we've got the um, the engine's operating at idle, so the stabiliser will still work. So this okay. is great, because... <laughs> well, it's learning, got, isn't it? Well, I've got to get used to the fact that no matter what you do, you stop in idle you do everything whenever you make a change. Slowly, Yeah, Marky. but when you're just trying to manoeuvre the boat and you're in a close proximity, and you feel you're in forward and you want a little bit of reverse, you, you go there, you've just got to make sure it becomes an absolute habit to stop in idle. Excellent. So no doubt there'll be a whole lot of advice comes in on that from <laughs> YouTube, which is fantastic. And here we are. And goodbye go check before the sun comes over the hill. Yesterday we were cleaning the boat, today we're sailing the boat. Oh, it's it is Oh, I have seen that. And this is our first time on the boat with just the two of us. Feeling okay, Marky? Yeah, I'm great. It's good. <laughs> We're going to make mistakes. He uses the we there as in the royal term. So, Marky, you're down here now in the pilot house yep. after being up the top because you light up the top so you can see everything when we're leaving, eh? Yeah, it's great. And you came down here? Yep, and um, we throttled, we transferred control to down here, and in doing that, um, we got control of the port engine again. So um, I'm going to do a bit more reading again because stuff's just going in and out of my head at the moment. Um, and I suspect when you change from upstairs to downstairs, it resets everything, or maybe it's even on a timer. I don't know, but I know one thing for sure I'm going to find out. Stabilizers are on. Um, so that's good, they're working nicely, although it's flat calm, so they haven't got much to do. And um, I'll set our track up soon. Beautiful and calm it is out And here. we're in heading hold. It's quite surreal actually guys, just the two of us. Just the two of us. I won't keep singing. Look at that. Paradise. Right, what are these for? They, they are for fixing the tender thing, so they go with that, and then that's when I've done that up there on the, the tender finally, that's everything done. So that's all tender stuff? Yeah. This and this is for the tender. Yeah. So that can go in the cupboard upstairs. Yes, so whereabouts are we going past, yeah. for that gap over there? No, we're going, see where that yacht is? Yeah. And then we go left up there. Oh, okay. See? So, so here we are, going, the... we're going to stop panning, come up here, there you go, and we're going to go through there. So that bit of land there, where is that? That bit there yeah. is there. There's that bit, out there. Hang on, hang on. This bit is See there. that, that opening? No, no, don't worry about no, that. No, look at that opening there, that's that. There's an island there, and an island there. There's an island, there's an island. We're a beamless island, aren't we? Okay, so we're going through so these that two. Yeah, right. so we're going to go up the so end the of the So the one that we've faced, that one there, it looks like we're heading straight for, is this one here, but then we're going to go that way. Right, that makes sense. Right, Marky. Right, Marky. Mm -hmm. this... back, that's good. Oh, do it. Who had it? Well, I think it might, it might actually be our one. 
to that, I need to up there to do that thing as well. And this? Yep, that, because that's what I clean up with. Right. So all of that shit should have been taken up here where the job's happening. Yeah, but the you can... up there. And you just put it in the cupboard. In that big cupboard? Yeah. yeah true. Good, good thinking. So that's going to go up. Not just dumping. So shit. that's going to go up and what? And this stuff. Thank you. I think after 35 so years I've still cleaning up after you. Right, we are going to... Do you need this blue tape? Water tank and we're going to empty. We can do that here? Yeah. Hey! Don't empty that up here. Where does it belong? So here we are, basically in absolutely flat, calm water. But you can just notice that we are just rocking gently from right to left, which when we first picked the boat up and the stabilizers had all been calibrated we weren't doing so i'll send this video through to Tilgren and partners to our friend Murat, and we'll get him to comment because we might just need abt guys from somewhere to come out again and just check that it is calibrated properly it's not it's not a lot but it's just continuous a rock left right left right even though it's essentially flat calm and that, people, is why we leave at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning. Because you get a few hours of just absolutely beautifully calm weather. So, Fiona here from the um, flight bridge, or the um, wheelhouse. Still keep getting to terms with all the names. And... Um, as you can see, I'm here at the wheel. And where is Mark? Oh, he's in the engine room. Just zoom in there so you can see. And he is doing the engine checks and checking everything. So he's left me in control and we are tracking on our way through to Mazaris and we are a little bit off our track as you can see there but we've got the heading one degree so that should slowly bring us back on track and um, that's my first time in the seat so a little bit um, strange feelings uh, up until now, every time we've done the trip, we've either had somebody from um, Nordhaven with us, or we've had the people from the factory, Telegram and Mirac doing sea trials, or we've had and had Renee with us. Whereas now, this is the first time it's just Mark and myself. So, um, learning a lot as we go. Uh, Mark and I were speaking before, both a little bit nerves in our tummy, but it would be nice to get this leg under our belt so that we've actually done one together. Um, when we looked at the weather forecast, the weather forecast said that it would be 0.3 metres. We got some great advice from a captain of a boat who had said to us, when you're looking at the weather, always make sure that you look at what you're happy to go with and um, if it's showing 0.6, double it and think, am I happy in 1.2? Um, and that's the rule of thumb that we have been using and that holds true for today because we looked and it said 0.3 but as we've been going, we've had for about, you know, swells of up to 0.6 and a little bit above. We tracked around um, that group of that land over there, the peninsula, um, and it was quite a bit, a few bit of a swell. So we're going to look into if we take that at a wider berth, will the swell not be as much? Um, so yeah, it's um, for those of you out there watching this who are at one with the ocean, you'll probably be looking out there and thinking, oh my god, it's so calm, what are they on about? But remembering that this is our first time together doing this, um, I can hear the door to the engine room closing. 
so I'd say that, that is Mark on his way back. Uh, we did have a word about it with just being the two of us, that if either of us are ever um, out doing something, that we must check in with each other. Because I had this moment when I was in the galley, getting his worship, his Royal Highness, his breakfast and a cup of coffee. Um, because somehow um, he didn't get breakfast this morning, um, then I could easily have been overboard and he wouldn't have had a damn clue where I was. So here we are and we have come into Maravis. Doesn't she look beautiful? And a friend of ours is sitting over there on the pier waiting for us, but we are just going past here because Marcus wants to get an idea of where we can anchor tonight. So this area of water we're in is called an anchorage, and that's the, where you can actually anchor. So I'll just show it to you on the map here. Do you want to point it out, Mark? Right there. Yeah. That dotted line. And it looks like all the boats are outside it. So that's really clever, isn't it? Yeah. And so what's the plan marking? Well we just puddle through here because it's 12 metres, 13 metres. Yeah. So it's nice and deep. I just want to go around, get with feeling for being in here, and then we'll come back and we'll pick a spot and then um, anchor for a couple of nights. Lovely, and where is it we can anchor? Over there. That's the picture I think Ian sent us. Yeah, Straight well, ahead I there. Mean, where can we yeah, there. There. No no not anchor, sorry, with the tender. There. Uh, no idea. Yeah, I think that's what he showed us. Oh, so very down there, no? No, 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 he told you he was over there behind that boat, mm -hmm. so you can't be there now. Um, and what else did you want to say, Mark, about the fuel? Oh, we're down to 11.50 RPM, we're still doing 7 knots, and we are burning 7.6 litres an hour. That is freaking unbelievable. There you go, you heard it from him. Yeah. So, man, I just don't, don't get it. And these are friends of Mark, Ian, who has taken the time off to grab a yacht with his children and his wife. Hello. Just, just, just let us know. We won't be here. How are we all? Good. Good, Good trip over. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. How was it, Mark? You found them all right? Pretty obvious. May have had something to do with me giving Ian a ring. It's the backpack that gives it away, doesn't it? Yeah. And go check. And go still walking around the longs. They got the jackets on. Well, it's only been the last. Well, successful first mission into town. Take two, because Mark had forgotten the book. And then when I took him back the second time, he pushed me out on my own. Say no more, that's a whole other story. Did I get in trouble? But this way, when we came out the second time, he was sitting on the side, I did feel like wanting to push you in. Charming. What do you think of Marmara, sweetie? It is beautiful. It is, eh? Nice. Start again, Mark. Full pressure on the hose. <laughs> It's a waste of time, we're doing anyway. I because mean, we're losing quite a bit of water here too, Mark, on the connection. Nice. My foot is doing it with my heel. Okay, there's our home for the night. We are going to go into that little harbour and anchor up. We're now Three hours out of Maramis on our way to Bodrum, so we've got about six hours to go tomorrow. Looks gorgeous. Another day gone and a whole lot more learned. So much to learn. Okay, so that was really interesting. We've just had a visit from the Coast Guard. They photographed all our documents, passports, ship's register, and they sent them somewhere and as yet we have not had a clearance to be here so um, very nice young men three of them 
and um, they said it gets very busy here but at the moment we are not cleared so they are treating us with suspicion to say the least um, and they're going to come back they're just going over to check every boat in this bay no matter how big or small to make sure that it is legal and I don't know if you can see but over here there's actually a whole flock of sheep a shepherd it looks like his home they've got a boat I mean it's just a beautiful spot and over there beyond that yacht up on the hill is an old old citadel effectively a fortress that defended this area three restaurants in this bay and in the summer it gets absolutely crowded apparently we are in nine meters of water got so much to learn about putting the anchor down letting out the right amount of chain I mean dumb we've got no markings on the chain yet so in Bodrum we're going to sort that out because you're putting it down and you just don't know you're kind of really just going off what is left in the chain locker um, and you know to be honest I don't think a chain should bloody go on a boat without marks on it frankly um, anyway so we're going to take the whole chain out on the marina if we're allowed to and we're going to get um, I think nylon zip ties and just put them along one at 10 meters two at 20 three at 30 etc and then we'll have a far far better idea of where we're at because at the moment we've got the chain down and I'm thinking about 30 meters and we're in eight meters so um, it leaves 22 it's only three times the depth but the purchase is really good over here apparently it's a it's a muddy bottom um, anyway I'm going to keep a very close eye on things I'll plot what's happening on the nav station right down to the smallest setting I can get which is five meters and at the moment to me we are just wandering around here beautifully keep an eye on it and once I'm confident I'll be happy to go to bed and we'll set the alarm the alarm goes off I'll just get up and check but I think it looks good settling down for the evening a bit surreal I have to say we are in Turkey in this little bay hills mountains all around obviously sheep farming country three restaurants in the middle of absolutely nowhere and that ancient citadel up on the hill yeah it's quite something right Marky so we're here to do the anchor again this morning and we did that yesterday morning too didn't we yep and we were bringing it up and then it stopped didn't it it did so okay so real rookie mistake here we were at Maramis raising the anchor and then at a certain point this just started spinning and the anchor stopped coming up so I thought oh we're bogged on the bottom of the um, bay but at that same stage oh, yeah, then I was here and I said to you that thing on the top mark is that not a manual thing that you can put something in to make it because I feel because you had let out some chain and it was letting out but it wasn't bringing back so I thought something's not gripping or there's something wrong with the mechanism yeah and I said no 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 no, no it won't be that <laughs> so we tried to maneuver the boat around thinking it was tied up down there and in the end we thought you know what this is ridiculous so I went inside to go to YouTube the oracle of all knowledge and Fiona stayed out on the boat to keep an eye on other boats in case we were drifting yes, which we weren't we weren't drifting and when I went to um, YouTube it talked about um, tightening this because it's basically a clutch and at that point I thought when I saw the lady doing it on YouTube I've seen one of those and so I went and found that in our accessories box and you'd think it would have on it winch tightening tool but anyway Marky so then what did you do with that I went in here and oh you put it in there did you yeah and I tightened it and if you, you can see if you if you take, take it off, yeah. it, it loosens, yeah. so chain goes. 
So there you go, absolutely rookie mistake. I do remember now doing this on Aparima about six years ago, but like I said the other day, my brain's just so full of info. But there's also another moral in the story, isn't there? Oh, listen to the first mate. <laughs> listen to the captain of the tender. <laughs> Sometimes yep. she has what it takes. I know, I know. Anyway, so um, we, we haven't are. got that problem now because we could just put our foot on there. Lovely. And there we go. And now it will be going up. up. All good news. Brilliant. Excellent. No, just batteries. getting these doors sorted. Oh, you want me to close that one? Yeah, got to have them closed. Yesterday we didn't, we got a bit of spray over the deck. It just stops it from all coming this way. So here right. we are, we're about to leave. It's beautiful, eh? It's gorgeous. Here we are. Always something, isn't it? I know there is. You know, there's no autopilot. I'm fine with that. I can drive for a while, we'll work it out. You don't want to work it out now? Well, we started the engines, and one of the things it says in the book is don't leave them at idle too long um, so you know I'm happy to drive I'd rather we just get going and um, I might regret it later and go well, oh my god I'll never do that again but, but this means okay let's just think about this before we head off because we can always just turn the engines off and sort out the autopilot well, except now we've got the anchor up oh yes yeah. be because well should we go and sit in the middle here and do that well, I think it's a good call. The only thing is, if we're going to be going without the autopilot, and then yep. you want to go down below, yep. I, I'm not happy at this stage to be here okay. without the autopilot. All right. So it means you're here now for the entire journey. Right. Let's go and sit out in the middle here. Okay. And we'll shut down, and we'll have a look at that, eh? I think okay. that's a good call, sweetie. Radio. I have wanted to stay here a bit longer, but you know what? You just got to keep going. If we don't, we're never going to get home. Got to keep heading west. And that over there is Greece, isn't it? It's roads where we were originally. So we're right on the border between Turkey and Greece. And that is why our Starlink is working, which is so exciting. Mark's already been given a coffee. Pretty cold night. Yeah. Not bad service around here. So, to me, those stabilizers are already moving more and feel better. We are flat. Amazing. And we've got a side, little side swell on here. Yeah. So, um, just going to go around the corner here. So, we rang Robert, didn't we, and from ABT, and he was amazing. Oh, fantastic. That man has lots of knowledge. A little bit breezy out here today, eh? Yep. And leaving Bozak Buku, we had to follow a ancient long-term tradition, throwing bread over the side to keep us safe. Story is, a seaman got drowned out here hundreds of years ago, and ever since then, the locals, every time they go past, they throw bread into the water to appease his spirit. So we followed suit. So here's our stabiliser panel, and we have the little issue of the stabilizers not working. So Mrs. R was not happy and it was very uncomfortable. So if you go into menu and we go to speed, we can see there that we are in manual. When this starts up, it defaults to auto. And when it goes to auto, it's looking for speed sensors. The This boat does not have speed sensors. So in auto, it just doesn't know what it wants to do and it thinks oh, I'm going to go fast so it basically gets almost no movement out of the stabilizers so just by being in auto here and having the ma the manual speed sorry manual here and having the manual speed set to 11 we go home and look at the stabilizers move and we have a beautiful ride don't we see we do it's amazing it's saying collision alert I can't see yeah, it's saying collision alert, starboard bow, so we're going to go show. And we have, okay, the AIS was alarm, lost. the target was lost, remove target. So I'm going to go yes. <laughs> and there is supposedly something ahead going right to left, but, um, hmm, can't see anything yet. So we'll just keep a good eye out. We're in daylight, we'll trust our eyes.
back in the Marlborough Sounds, you would have not been happy, you know? Whereas I think you coming down from Tuzla has given you, you know, confidence in the boat and what it can handle and a realisation that even when the forecast says three, four hundred mil, there's just no guarantees and so you, you, you're going to end up where it's maybe a bit choppy when you don't expect it and you're, you're coping really well I think. Thank you very much. You're not doing too bad a job yourself. That went from 80 odd to 30 odd metres. And this spectacular point, your shelter's behind it, Buak Koi. And rumour has it, it is Cleopatra's favourite swimming beach. Not enough sand for her, so she had galleons brought over from Egypt of sand. And amazing place, lovely little ancient citadels. So, we think we might have the Coast Guard here. Well, somebody in a black inflatable I don't know if it's the coast car but man they got four big donks on the back of that thing so this will be interesting just to see who we've got here I oh, know they don't seem so interested now they did before I think we were just by a prohibited area and I think they're just checking that we're not going in the prohibited area because that would get us in trouble but anyway I shall report further And there's the prohibited area, so I think they were just thinking we might clip it. It says entry prohibited, but you see that black dotted line to our left? That is actually the track that we took coming from Tuzla to Rhodes. I was asleep in the bunk. And uh, not quite sure how they ended up going straight through there, but anyway, um, obviously we did. Well this time, we're not. So there is Bodrum straight ahead and out in our port side the island of Koz there's the township over there, Marina apparently very very similar to Rhodes so we are very much looking forward to going there tomorrow night and as we said we are going to try and do the check-in ourselves. Always happens to us eh sweetie? What's the problem? And the most fun thing is them trying to pronounce Awanui NZ. <laughs> so here are our men over here. And we managed to communicate with hand signals and oh, yes. anyway. We're waiting. We're waiting. Looks like they're trying to find a spot. But in the meantime, there is a gorgeous N55. Look at that. We have a friend. Uh, just one. Okay. Okay, Captain. Follow me. Okay, it was probably sensible if I turned the camera off here. Yeah, definitely. 
as we maneuver down this little lane we will get back to you once we are happily on the dock wish us luck so okay this is going to be absolutely fun people here is where they're planning on putting us for the night so i'm definitely going here while we maneuver this little baby in there backwards catch you soon so here we are no damage done and we got some help from these kind people beside us welcome to bodrum And tomorrow we get our water maker fitted. Shannon did really well. I stuffed up the backing just a little bit, which pulled the rope out of her hand before they really got it tied on, so that was my uh, faux pas. Anyway, um, chap next door helped, and everyone's so helpful, as is always the case. And they keep calling me captain, so don't really feel worthy of that title yet. But anyway, I'll take it, and uh, what a beautiful place. So... Water maker tomorrow. Well, that's going to make a difference, and that is the last big item for a while. So uh, after that, we can head into Greece and relax. Okay, so we're all checked in to our marina. 143 euros for the night, and we've got to check out of Turkey tomorrow. So asked if we were allowed to do that. The lady rang customs. Customs said no. You have to use an agent. We asked. Is that necessary because it says online you can do it yourself no you have to use an agent so now we've got three places to go down here to find somebody that can fill out a form and take our passports to customs and our paperwork to the harbour master pretty simple process i reckon and then you um are all done you're allowed to leave turkey and you know what it's time it is time to start exploring somewhere else. Had my three months here. Um, really looking forward to getting into Greece. We'll, um, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, we'll get back to you on how the agency works out. And you'll never guess what, people, but the Aqua Prime showroom is right opposite the marina. So check this out. Look at it. Look at all this gear. Woohoo! We're just walking there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hoo la la. Ooh. Well, our one's not here. <laughs> yep. Great. We've only heard good things about Aqua Prime. Well, that is a pretty good end to an amazing day. Last night in Turkey. Welcome. Huh? Good, good, to, good, good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? We're good. Let battle commence. Yes. Huh? Here we go. There you go, sir. Uh, and I think over there behind you, in there, is the electrical. Ah. Just on the, no, ground? On, on the wall. Ah, here. Just, just to put your... Water maker electric. Stick, yeah, stick your head in that corner. Go in there, see? This? No, get back. No, this one here. This one on the edge, on this wall. Ah. On the wall, in there. Yeah, okay, so the boat's plumbed and wired for the water maker but obviously they need to know it would be helpful 
to know exactly what piping is for what. <laughs> so um, we've got the seawater coming in, we've got the power coming in, now we just need to find the pipe that takes the fresh water to the tank and we need the pipe that goes overboard to get rid of the other water. So I am going to ring Tolgarin and Partners. Uh, Mark. Very nice. Uh, inside, screw no problem. Screw. Screw? Hmm. Yeah. Inside. Onto the deck? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank You'll have no choice, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, yep, no problems putting screws in. Okay. I'm just yeah. ringing them now and I'll get back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we are missing you. Why are you at the marina? Because the whole number 41 and 33. Oh, you yeah, got that there now. The test, yeah. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, yeah, I missed you too. Oh, that's so lovely. Hey, we're just getting the water maker fixed and Mark just wants to have a chat with you. I'll put you over. Here is Mr. Marcos. Okay. Hello, Furkan. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mark. How are you? Why, why, why are you all yelling at me? Are you, are, did, you, did you miss me? I miss you a lot. Yeah, I miss you a lot. Uh, yes, that's no problem. That's no problem. Give me a call. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, so when you go down in the lazarette, you think to yourself, oh, yeah, there's a fair amount of room in there, and there is. Um, but when it comes as a, as a built-up unit, then obviously um, it's all got to fit in the one spot. So there is an option for this water maker to have um, like a combo unit, as it were, where you can get the pump separate, the filters separate, and then that way you can actually fit it all over the place into the nooks and crannies. So um, in an ideal world, it'd be lovely if it can go in as one piece, because then you've just got a connection going in and a connection coming out instead of connections in, connections out, connections in, connections out. Um, yeah, so anyway, we'll see what they come up with, and they're certainly um, going to try and get the whole unit in, that's for sure. Right. Mark, hello. This is good. Great. You okay? Yeah, I, I, wherever I'm, I'm in your hands. Wherever you think is good, I think is good. I'm happy. This is coming. Sometime this is no problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That looks very good to me. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's not covering anything up, mm -hmm. you know. The, the Maybe after uh, battery, oh, need a bit. Yeah, yeah, but we can, you the know, the, 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 bat the battery you change every three, four years, you know, so mm -hmm. um, it's just become mm -hmm. something that has mm -hmm. to be done. But, um, are you happy where those sit, the feet at this end, or do you want to go in just a just a very small bit, or is that is that a? I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. And these guys are Aqua Prime, which is a Turkish water maker company, and we selected them if you remember at the Bosphorus boat show, and they were just so helpful. Um, they've been magic. They've given us a GST free invoice or VAT free invoice. Um, so that effectively saved us 20%. It looks like there might be a bit of an issue with that. So worst comes to the worst, it will cost us another uh, 7,000 euros. So it'll be another 1,400 euros. But anyway, um, they were certainly really, really helpful and they're very genuine. If it is a mistake, it's a mistake. Um, so we'll deal with that. And they said if we came to Bodrum, um, they would fit it for free. And they're based right at the end of the pier. Um, so it's just magic for them. They've got their um, office, their factory, um, workshop right right by the marina. And they said they'd be here at nine, and they were here at nine. There's four of them. Trolley full of stuff's arrived. They're straight into it. And um, yeah, in the usual Turkish way, no problem. And maybe for the N41, if people want to go that way, I think you'd probably definitely need the modular system, not the 
compact, we've got the compact, so you'll get some good shots of that later anyway. Hello, Furkan. Hello, Mark. Yeah, how are you? Are you good? Are you good? Uh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm so good. How about you? So yeah. You are preparing for C trial for N4133. C trial for N41, what number? Uh, 33. Oh, that's the Australian one. No. That is actually not Australian. To understand what it was, uh, Australian. Ah, okay. Oh wow, okay. Hey, um, we are in Bodrum at the moment, and mm -hmm. the um, guys are here to fit the water maker, and we have found the power supply, we have found the seawater in supply, and they were just asking, we want to be sure which is the pipe for the feed to the water tank and which is the pipe for the feed back overboard for the through hole? Uh, okay, I got it. Just, uh, did, did I put the label on it? Uh, I, don't think, I, I don't think there was a label on it for the water to the fresh water tank or to the overboard. You put a label on for the seawater to the water maker. So that's good. Uh, we've it. we've got we've got the seawater. That's good. There's a label on it, but we could not mm -hmm. see we could not see a label for the feed to the fresh water tank and for the through hull for the overboard discharge. Yeah. You get you get good healthy information from the Nuri, I guess. Yeah, Nuri's on holiday though. Yeah, you can call him. No, no, don't, doesn't matter. Oh, what about what about Emery? Can't help you about English, but Nuri can help you anyway. No, okay. All right, I will call. I miss you too. Yeah, we miss bye you. Bye. We miss you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, so that didn't work. Now we need to go to Nuri. Nuri's electrical. Um, so that's interesting. Just going through Fiona's phone here, Nuri. Emre arranged that, so it's best to call him actually. Okay. I will call Emery. If you could, you send Fiona Emery's number. Of course, of course, I'm sending him now. He's on holiday though as well. Emery's on holiday too. Really, I don't know that. Yeah, apparently so. I don't. I hate ringing on holiday, but there is a there is a um Nuri Nuri. There is a green pipe with a stop valve on it that finishes just before the electrical connection under the lazarette floor. Okay. Uh, hmm. D does it have any label? No, that's why we're asking. Because, uh, yeah, we're... Yeah. Uh, let me talk to Emma myself and I'll get back to you. Because um, I could, I could uh, ring Emery uh, and then I could give the phone to the workers. Yeah, sure. Let me just uh, call him first myself. Okay. And then I'll get back to you. Uh, maybe he will send me the photos of the. Great. You know, thank, the, thank you very uh, much, Nuri. Yes. Yeah, and sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt your holiday. It, it's okay. No worries. No, don't forget okay. to call me. Okay. Thank you, Nuri. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. So Nuri is now going to call Emery, and Emery, he effectively does all the three CAD drawings for the entire boat and plans out where everything goes so um yep he will call him and then we'll get a phone call back and then i suspect the best thing to do will be give the phone to the workers because uh turkish on turkish is better than english on turkish so uh, we'll get there at the back now that's good good and the unit sitting there i like it beautiful oh we've got the filters on the wall mm -hmm. great that's the way we yeah. Three filters. Four. Four. Oh my goodness. Two, two oh, micron okay. particle filters. Two. Yep. Two Şöyle. carbon filters. Two one, micron, one, two carbon. One uh, backwash, washing. Yep. One production. Yep, and it's got auto backwasher. Mm -hmm. Auto 
Yes, yep. Yes, correct. Okay, so now I am off to Equiprime because Equiprime were going to look at getting an agent for us for departing Turkey. Um, but nothing happened this morning, so I've gone and found one that we're happy with. 120 euros. The prices range from 195 euros down to 120. And we just found out that there is no cust sorry, there is no harbour master at Demarin, even though all the data online and um, on the Navionics says that this is the port of entry and exit. But since COVID, apparently there has been no harbour master and at times not even customs. So we're not even sure yet if we can get customs for us. So I'm just popping down to Aqua Prime just to let them know that we don't need an agent because I didn't want to suddenly find we had two. And then my man is back there preparing paperwork. Apparently he has to drive to Bodrum. And once in Bodrum he can get the Harbour Master clearance and then hopefully there's a customs person here. We have to move the boat onto another wharf. Oh, it's very complicated. Anyway, here I am at Aquaprime. Alright, so Alpa, my Aquaprime man, is not in the office, so I have his phone number. Now I'm going to head back and then I can give him a call just to make sure that we can cancel the agent and then we can uh, do our best with my new man to get us out of Turkey. So, um, everything's in place. The agent's just coming to check that all the work is actually going to be complete today because apparently once he's got us signed out we have to leave which if you go back three weeks you'll remember when we left Tuzla we checked out with customs and then we were parked in the marina went out for dinner stayed the night next day went and got fuel got some stuff for the boat went shopping and then finally left just gonna have to see what happens here it's getting a little bit windy this afternoon and uh, but we've only got about a 50 minute ride over to Kos but quite a bit of wind when we get over there so we'll make the decision if we're happy to go into the old town port and back into the quay if we're not happy to do that then we'll pop along to the marina and stay there and then the next few days looks like the weather's a little bit iffy so uh, just going to keep an eye on things stay tuned for further updates Yeah, so take that back. Looks like there are two Nord Havens here. Don't know if I like the colour of that one, but anyway. Um, certainly like their bright colours over here, and they're not scared to go outside what's the norm for boats. And just coming up to, pretty sure it's a 55. I would say it is, looking at the size of the pilot house. Bigfoot London. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, there we go. So, Bigfoot London. Yeah, I don't know. We'll um, see if true and that know back in the States, but always keen to catch up with Nordhaven people. Nice little wash station on the back there. We do not have an area big enough for that. Um, quite like the look of it. Hmm. Okay, so this is a little bit late in reality, but um, we said we're going to be honest, so we are. Um, I'm now just setting up the grab bags for the boat. So I got these back home, so here are the two grab bags. And the idea is to have a main grab bag and then sort of almost like a, a secondary one. And the idea behind the secondary one is that whenever we go into port um, in the dinghy, the tender, because sometimes we might be a little bit of a distance away, we will take the little grab bag and the big grab bag is effectively then only for if we actually have to abandon ship and we always take both bags with us. So the area up in the pilot house immediately behind the um, pilot chair is a little cubby hole down under the bench seat and that's going to have 
both grab bags in it and the life jacket for the tender and that's all nothing else so we always know where they are and that will be it and here is the little PLB I got that back home as well that neat fits nice and snugly oh nice and snugly in there it's a cute little unit pretty clever and basically you just pull that back off there there's your aerial you rotate the aerial up into the lock position this is all waterproof and on there is a test button we did the test and two tests one is just to test the battery the second is to actually test that the whole unit locks into satellites which it did and that's the on button so obviously you don't want to push that and the battery and this is valid for seven years so what we're going to do is set up a system so that we've actually got all our battery stuff and periodic stuff set up so that we're not having to be forever thinking what expires when what goes where when do we have to do what so we're going to set up a calendar system so just put that in this little bag and there's a strap coming out so you can always just stick it over your arm okay so first thing that goes in the small grab bag is the personal locator beacon and we also bought a um, portable VHF radio haven't had that out yet crazy crazy need to get onto these things we'll open that up so um, yep we'll have that in there as well and then we've got these two smoke canisters so we're going to have one smoke canister in the small grab bag one smoke canister in the big grab bag and then we've got four of the smooth top no we haven't we've got four five six six of the large flares handheld flares and six of the small handheld flares so they're all um, parachute flares so okay in the tender I just think we put a couple of each there's the tender and then we'll put four of the large ones in the big grab bag and four of the small ones so obviously both grab bags go as the concept they're both together you grab them we grab the e-perb off the pilot house and we get on to worst case scenario the life raft also in here is we try and put our cell phones when the time came and i mean there's no point putting them in there now because you're going to be taking them out every day so it kind of defeats the purpose um, we'll put some water in there we'll have our life jackets on and we're going to get some muesli bars and um, stuff like that because my attitude is where we're going initially will change it a little bit if we're doing a big crossing but where we're going initially you know if we haven't been picked up sighted or in some way um, looked at being rescued in 48 hours then um, we're in serious strife um, we're just not going to be that far from land so um, yeah a little bit of food in there enough water for a couple of days and um, that's pretty much it we might actually buy a couple of survival blankets I think um, just so you can wrap yourself up and stay a little bit warm but yeah so that's our two grab bags which as I say will be in the one place never get changed anytime we come back on the tender the small grab bag goes back where it belongs and um, we just got to make sure we check things like batteries and that to make sure that everything is going to work shouldn't really have been done three weeks ago so sorry about that but um, it's now done so now we're just trying to get the cable up from huh? in the lazarette because up on here is going to be the control panel so that we can operate the water maker from inside the cabin and of course everything on a boat is small and compact upside down so here is the control box provided by Telgrin at the boat build stage and there's the freshwater pipe down here 
and believe it or not that little pipe going into it is the sole feed into it from the water maker and that pumps through 100 litres per hour or makes 100 litres per hour. Down here we've got the seacock coming in for the water maker so they've connected on to that and it's the seacock there if we wanted another generator but we're not getting another generator. There's a filter and then the feed to the water maker it went through into the water making unit there high pressure pump back over on the back right and then the four filters it's two carbon like two poly wound so I'm going to get my head around how often I need to do those and then this gentleman here is trying to feed cable up into the saloon which is where the remote panel is so that we can operate the water maker without coming down here something else to look after and believe it or not I was going to do this install yeah right so pleased Jake these over. guys have been here Jake. Okay, so the unit's installed up top and we're all ready. We put the generator on, it's a 1.5 kilowatt water maker and they've asked me to put on the water maker circuit breaker. So that is on. And we should now see if it's working. Can it go in English in the end or not? English, okay. Thank you. Uh, Is that the pump? It's quite the pump's quiet, eh? No operation. Oh, it's not working. So apparently, no operation at this stage. But. I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it. Over here, you can see we've connected in huh? oh. to there. So there is port, cockpit, and forward deck discharge, and they've put a nice brass valve in there, and that transparent pipe coming in is off the water maker, and I can see water flowing through there at the moment, two hose clips, so that's good. Tied all the way along here. We're up to two bar now. Oh. We've got a red light on low pressure there, so oh we're up to three bar now. I'm with Aqua Prime and they've just finished doing the installation of our water maker. Woohoo! And I got a hand look. And I got a hand. Great. To Shakula, to Shakula, to Shakula. Okay, so the ferry departs here at 8.30 and we're allowed to use the wharf after 8.30. So just check that with the guys checking people in for the ferry. Um, so all good so far and to be honest it actually looks okay out here yeah I'll go and have a look at the ferry now okay there's the ferry and that's where we come on to the wharf so I have to say I'm rather pleased with that it looks great so um, yeah 8 30 when that departs I'm pretty happy to come out here and I'm plenty of room to maneuver um, and if you look out there beyond it bit hard for you to tell probably but it doesn't look too bad out in the um, straight there between Bodrum and the island so yep we all go I shall go home and inform Mrs R and we'll get ready to go looking good
our first departure on our own from a country. Let's hope the arrival into Greece is as easy and as we said we are going to try and do it ourselves. So watch this space. In the next episode we successfully dock for customs exit, interesting arrival into COS and we clear customs.